You may take your seats. My name is Deborah. I am the last born of 14 children. One mother, one father. Married properly in church. My parents, they were born again. I grew up in a village, but now it's town. It has turned into a town. I was a beloved child, but I was not given to Chejo. You know Chejo? Eh? I was not pampered, but I was loved. And I was also disciplined. You know when you love somebody, you do what? You discipline them. I grew up doing all the activities they do in the village. Digging, looking after cows, going to the well, carrying pots, and carrying, uh, uh, what are they called? Tins. We used to call them tins. Uh, what are they called in Luganda? Edebe. Some of you are very, very young. Who, is, who knows Edebe? Among the older generation. You know Edebe? Okay, cooking oil used to come in tins that were rectangular, not the circular ones. So we used to cut them, and then we would go and use them to fetch water or to keep things. So that's the generation we grew up in. And then as we grew up, things started changing. Because during our time, we never used to go to school with shoes. If you came to, with, to school with shoes, you would be the out of place. Everyone would be like, hey, oh, your mom, please don't even get near them. They are so special. They are so rich. So we went to school. I went to a day school in Gayaza, Church of Uganda. And we used to be smart children from a fairly fairly poor, fairly rich family. So we're medium. Because our father was at first rich, and then when, okay, we're at first rich, then our father died. And when he died, everything that he owned went with him. Some of you have experienced those challenges. Who has had such a, an experience? Anyone here? Uh-huh, you have. You had everything, and then all of a sudden you have nothing. You only have to scratch to go to school. You scratch to give an offertory. You scratch to buy a uniform. You scratch to get meat. Maybe you eat it only on Christmas. That's the kind of life that we grew up in. Then, by the way, we watch patches. You people, you don't even know patches. Do you know patches? They put patches in your uniform, patches in your dress for home. And I remember that they bought for me a dress. It was lemon green. There is somebody in lemon green somewhere there. Some of you don't know colors, especially boys. Girls, why might you know colors? Stand up, you is in lemon green. I had a dress like that. That color up, it's called lemon green. So, that dress had an inside, let me call it, a, what they call it a lining. Yeah, okay? So, because of scarcity, I cut out the lining, or they cut out the lining, it would be a dress for casual, and then the top one would be for church. Yes, and that's how we grew up. Then we would sew the ends with our own hands. Some of you don't even know how to hold a needle. Eh? You don't know, do you know? Especially the guys. You take to the tailors, even the girls, you have tailors everywhere, buttons you take to the tailors. For us, we grew up in a, a country or in a situation where your hands were used. Your brain worked more than in the book. The, you, you see videos passing around about China, how their children study in school. That's how we studied in school, making baskets, making our broom, sweeping our compound, sweeping roads, collecting rubbish, digging the, the, the community roads. That's how we grew up. But when we, the country became rich, that was during Museveni's regime. You people, you don't sweep. You find when they have swept for you. You don't clean anything. Even at home, you have mates. You don't even know how to wash your clothes, some of you. You don't know how to arrange your wardrobe. You don't know how to comb your hair. You almost want to put your head and somebody combs your hair. You can't plate your hair. I know how to plate my hair. I plated it until it got long. For many years, I plated my hair. Why? I didn't have the money. And if I had it, it wasn't for that. It was worth 
doing something else, maybe going to my mother to see her, or buying for her a loaf of bread. That's how we grew up, in that community. And when we were growing up, we would, at home we were farmers, just like many of the people in the village. But our home, because we were a big family, 14, we were very, very hardworking and productive. Not because of number, but our culture was, we were very hardworking. So we'd grow crops, and the only thing we could do was to, sh to feel part of the community, was to share these things. Whether it was dodo, we'd carry baskets of dodo around the, the whatever, the village. Whether it was overkedo, we'd carry baskets. You go this side, you go this side. We had many baskets at home, so they would send us. Gwegende wa mwami katende, gwegende wa mwami sajari abene, gwegende wa mchala gundi, gwegende wa namuandu, so and so. So we had namuandus. Who knows what namuandu means? Eh? <laughs> you know this dot com generation, some words have died. What is namuandu? Eh, Namwandu here in Uganda is a widow. My mother was also a widow. So she cared so much for the widows. So we'd go to the widows and take their things. We'd also go to the old women who have lost their, okay, whose children have either died or are no longer there. They, they are alone. We'd also go there. We'd sleep for them houses. We'd wash for them clothes. You know, we would do things as a community. If my mom ever found a child on the road playing, instead of going to the well, she would beat them or tell them, I'll report you today. Your child, you will not even allow the neighbor to touch. You'll even sue them. And that's how we are spoiled. When the neighbor tells you, your child, I found them here, they were playing with this and that, they stole my sugar. My, you think I don't have sugar? That's the community we live in today. Your parents will defend you to the core, and you are very happy about it, and you think it is love. It is not love. That's not the community of the believers. When we are in Christ, wrong is wrong, and right is right. You are going to do exams. And let me tell you how Christians fail in exams. I am not saying failing as in getting poor marks. How they fail good, they cheat. They, because they think they are in a community, they think they have the obligation to tell each other answers. Hmm? You, know, you know I didn't want her to fail. It would look like I am very mean. Hello? That is not Christian. Okay, I didn't even tell her the answers. Me, I just put there the paper. If she wants or he wants to copy, he copies. You are you are cheating. You are teaching people to cheat. Some of you are asking lecturers, smiling to them so that they can give you those coursework marks that you missed out of 60. You know, master, I don't even know how you call them. You know, for us, we used to call teachers masters. But lecturers, we used to call them what? Did we used to call them titles? What mister? What doctor? Whatever. You hey, doctor Sam. Please, doctor Sam, you know Bambi that I was sick. Just please, that course work. Give me some marks. I don't want to fail. You are doing those things like non believers. A community of believers is disciplined, does what is right. They earn what they work for. If they, you don't work for something, you don't earn it. I have had my children repeat classes, not because they are not brilliant, but because for us we believe that if you have not passed, you have not passed. And that's it. If I take you to a school and you don't do well and you need to repeat a class, if I look for us another school that can admit you and you do interviews and you fail, you will repeat. If you pass the exams given to you at the school, you will continue. I keep telling them, wherever your brain takes you, that's where you will go. And I am not saying that you are stupid. If your brain does not allow you to pass a certain maybe coursework, accept the fact that you have not passed. 
But if it is out of laziness, then you cannot blame anyone. You cannot even blame God. That is just you. You have chosen to do that. And I want to say that sometimes when we are in a community of believers, we don't want to share things. I want to go to the scriptures. Let's go to chapter 2 of Acts, verse 42. Chapter 2 of Acts, verse 42. They were devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they committed, continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily by daily. If you are that kind of community that prays together, learns together, shares together, does many things together. If someone is sick, you take care of them. If they don't know what, like for example, they don't understand a certain course unit, you discuss with them to understand. You are going to grow in numbers. The university will also grow. If you go to your lecturers and they help you out where you are stuck, we shall grow in numbers. Because a community that lives as a community, because a community in basic language is a group of people that live together and work together. If you are not that kind, then you don't belong to the community. You are an outcast. For example, we cannot say that somebody who came here to steal your mobile phone is, is part of this community. They have just sneaked in to steal phones. If you belong to a community that is Christian and that is of believers, you, you follow what you're supposed to do. When we are praying, you are praying. When we are mourning, you are mourning. Do you know your neighbor's name? You are, I think you have two, two courses here. Not so. It's law and medicine, right? Look around. You start counting how many people you know. I'm going to pick people and they tell me how many people they know by name. Just look around. I take choir members. Don't tell me your choir member friends. I, I look outside the choir. And some people are bending down. Huh? They will want to see your face. Me, I only know like four, eh? how many people? Reverend Kamoga. <laughs> Reverend Nabukenya. Nabukenya. <laughs> you are Ezekiel? Ezekiel. Uh, I know the one who read Favor. The one who read the portion. Uh, others, honestly, I don't remember you, but I remember her face, the one who is on the drum, and who else? Others, I don't really know you so much. But have you noticed that there are people you know? The lady in blue, how many people do you know by name? Four. Thank you for being honest. What about this lady in exchange which has yellow and purple? You know around 10. Okay. What about you, madam? Boys are, guys, I'm coming. Don't worry when I call you boys. I have a boy in, at university. I call him a boy. Yes? You know about six. Yes, sir. How many do you know around? They are like seven. Try to get to know people's names. That's a community. You learn where they stay. You learn what they do. You don't have to do what they do if it is wrong. But you need to mind other people's business 
that is not sinful. If it is sinful, you can know it, but you help them to overcome. Not so? Yes. So when we live in a community of believers, that's part of our work. We pray together, we intercede, we sing, we dance. By the way, I was so amused. I saw people standing like stick, eh, not a stick or a tree, a tree like this. Now, you people, you don't know that you'll get old like me and you can't dance. You better dance when you are still young. Let me tell you, I envy those people who can dance. There is a lady who came here singing and she, where is she? There are two. There is one there and there is also another one who was in, where is she? I don't see her. Hey, the Sunday school teacher. Oh my God, she was, let me tell you, I made all these dances. Eh? And I had energy. And people loved me. The children, when they would see me, because I'm a social worker, I used to work with children in slum communities and poor communities. So every time they would see teacher Deborah, they would know there is singing, there is dancing. I knew every song. When I started, we must dance and dance as I do. I go backwards, you go backwards, forward, forward, sideways, sideways. I twist my, I twist, I would do all sorts of things because I was part of that community. When you are part of a community, you do what is worth the community. Do you want this community to be a boring community? You stay standing. Do you want the singers to be boring? Let them sing. I will sing Hosanna, hallelujah. I will sing Hosanna, dancing round before the throne of glory. I will sing Hosanna, I will clap Hosanna, I will clap Hosanna. Now, what you say I'm boring? But if I say, I will sing Hosanna, hallelujah, I will sing Hosanna. Dancing round before the throne of glory. I will sing Hosanna. Will you clap Hosanna? I will clap Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will clap. Clapping round before the throne of glory. I will clap. I will jump Hosanna. I will jump Hosanna. Hallelujah. Jumping round, jumping round before the throne of glory. I will jump Hosanna. I will wave Hosanna. I will wave Hosanna. Hallelujah. I will wave Hosanna. Hosanna. Waving round before the throne of glory. I will wave Hosanna. I will twist Hosanna. I will twist Hosanna. Hallelujah, I will twist Hosanna, oh, oh, twisting round before the throne of glory, I will twist Hosanna, will you jump Hosanna, I will jump Hosanna, hallelujah, I will tired because I'm getting older. Those days, that was just katono katono. Eh? I would sing, I would dance. In a community, that's what is supposed to happen. You come to university, you come to this church, behave like one of them. Bring life. If it is prayer, pray. If it is reading the word, read. They call upon you to read. I am not sure. I am not sure that I can actually stand up there. But when they tell you to scream in the hostel, hey, can scream. Eh? 
when they tell you to lead the service, I'm not sure whether I can lead. You just read a book. What is there? And pray. Not so? Yes, that's all we do. So let's know that we are a community of believers and we must do things together. I want us to go to Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Acts chapter 4. Verse 32 says, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerful at work in them. All that there was eh, in them all, that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the cells and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. I think I'll stop there. How much do you help others? Or you only spend time looking at the poor, the bad shoe, the hold shoe, the, the faded jeans, the faded t-shirt, the not being smart. Can you share? Do you share as believers? When you see your friend is in need, do you share with them? Is there anyone who told somebody they are smart in the week? You told somebody in the week you are smart. Not because you want to have a relationship with them. Ah, for real, for real. You told somebody they were smart. Eh? For real. Not because of this other thing. Eh? Okay. Good. Thank you very much. So when we see people that they are very smart, that's a community of believers. They are not envious. And you don't say, I want that dress like yours. I don't know when we are dressed the same way. Eh? How shall we look like? Where did you buy it? I also want to go there. Ah, ah. Now we know your Lulu. Eh? No, 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 now again, now, you ask her, where do you buy these dresses? She takes you there, you also choose a nice dress. Boys, I don't know where you buy your shirts. I used to buy for my son from either men who, eh, who walk around, if they were second hand, or from the shops. I would send him to buy for himself from the shops. So I don't know much about boys, especially when they are older like you. He told me he prefers to give him money. He buys what he wants. And I was so surprised when he bought, what are these shoes called? The ones which are clothed shoes. They are, clo eh? they are not leather. What do you call them? Sneakers. You call them what? Sneakers. For me, I was so amused that you guys, you like sneakers. Because during our time, they were for the poor. <laughs> Am I lying? We used to call them Lusejera. And now they are, they are on. Eh? It is that thing. Eh? But during our time, you wear shoes which are cloth, like a cloth. And now they cost 70,000. And the ones, oh, you know, I was like, this is what you like. And then my daughter, I took her to um, butter. I would buy shoes of 90,000. Maybe I've told this story before. 80,000, 90,000. Then one time I go to school, she's wearing different shoes of 10,000. I look at her, I am like, Madam, you borrowed shoes? Huh? She says, mm -hmm. How they pretend when you go for a visitation. I said, I'll get her when you get home. So we got home. I told her, ah, Tell me, where did you get those shoes we are wearing? Mommy, you know the pocket money you gave me? I sent someone to buy for me. They are across the school. I said, why? Why would you buy shoes of 10,000? Mommy, because all other children, that's what they wear. You see, the community, her community was not wearing butter shoes of 90,000. Why she wanted to fit in the what? In the community. Have many pairs, even if they cost little. That is the, your community. So try to live in the community as it lives. Don't try to over shadow the community. Some of you want to fly in jets. There is a, somebody who was flying in a jet to go for visitation, right? In some school. A drone. 
prom. It was a prom. By the I think they banned them. Not so. I was the happiest. They banned them. Formally, they were banned. Maybe they're happening, but formally, they were banned by the government. So, you come in a jet. Don't over. Hmm? You have 30 shirt share. Here, they said no one lacked anything. All believers had one thing in common. They shared. How is sharing? You have earrings like 30 pairs. Why don't you share with one who has one? Tell them, Sister Jangu Murumi Yange, come. I have us here. Can you please pick some? Boys, I don't know much about you. But if you have many shirts, call your brother if he wants. Tell him I have many shirts here. Can you pick? Because I know the things that disturb you today. Food. You have money to go out, take your friends out. Muliechi mele, wali waga ba fruit si wano. Mugende murumuye, muga menjaga la fruit. Ali wa? Wali waga ba letila fruits every week. Eh? So for him, he's a giver of fruit so that you stay healthy. He's a medical doctor, is he? Eh? Eyo yo mugende uwe, you get fruits. Yes. These guys would sell things they would bring at the disciples' feet, then they would distribute. How many of you would allow this today? You would say, it is my right. And the lawyers, you have spoiled our society. <laughs> it is my money. It is my right. I have a right not to give my neighbor. I don't have an obligation. Come on, are you a Christian? Your neighbor's children don't go to school. You have more than fees. More money than even double your fees. Get a, a child you can sponsor while you are still at school. Take them to a, a, a school in the local place and pay for their school fees from your tuition. You can do that. Some of you are very rich. You come from very rich families. If you can pay five million, some of you, it's just nothing. You can pay 300,150 for a child. And you support your neighbor's child. Go and treat them. Go visit them. Find, check, check them whether they are healthy. Lawyers, advise your neighbors. Advise people that you know who are struggling with issues. Don't ask for money all the time. We shall go to chapter 5. Now, there was a man called Ananias and Sapphira. To cut the long story short, they were part of this group. They sold what they had. And then they kept some. When they kept some, God was not happy. And so they were all struck dead. So sometimes when we live in a community and we don't live with the community or in the community, we are there, but we are actually not there. God can take away our blessings. And I am not saying you only have to share money and things are not. You can share a prayer. Go and pray for people. Go and preach the gospel. If your sister's here is not looking nice, tell her. Eh? Because actually, if I asked you, how many of you told your sister or brother that you need to comb your hair? Maybe I'll not see her hand. Or your hair is not neat. Maybe I'll not see her hand. You don't want to hurt them. Okay? You want to be fine, to have friendships. But the community has discipline, has order, has norms, has values, has customs. Are you abiding by those customs and values and norms? First of the country, next of the tribe, third of being a Christian. What will take you to heaven is did you actually do something that was good, that was right, that was proper? These days there is a gospel they preach that once saved, already saved. Jesus died for us on the cross. All sins were covered. It doesn't matter whether you sin. You will still go straight to heaven. Sam, thank you very much. You continue. When you die, the angels will all come in a different way. When we get saved, our character changes. Because we live in a community. You don't live alone. One time, my daughter told me, 
but for me, mommy, I, I dress what I like. Hey, my dear, this is a community. We are living among people. If you are living in a forest eh, with monkeys, you wouldn't dress like that. Because you wouldn't care. So I told her, hey, baby, I'm a deja moon. Just remove. Because we are living with people. She's like, it doesn't matter. You know, you know the girls, there is a the reason it. You know, it doesn't matter. And the guys, even if I don't comb my hair. The guys, even if I don't comb my hair. I don't know why mom, my mom is always on my case. And I'm like, I am on your case. Yeah, when they make their voices big, I also make mine big because it can be. But I don't know what's wrong with mommy. Yes, you don't know what's wrong. But it's because I want you to fit in society and to be like somebody who loves God. Don't look like non-believers. You copy everything they bring, you copy. Are you a copycat? I have some few minutes, and I'm about to end. Let's go to Acts chapter, sorry, Romans chapter 12. Verse 13 to 20. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. I don't have to repeat that. Do I have? No. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Is that easy? No. But we have to do that. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. I've already told you that. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. I have told you that. Don't think that you are great. Some of us had rich parents. Rich, 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 rich. Never for anger we remained with nothing. I'm not telling you your father will die tomorrow, your mother. No, 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 no. But God is very, is a person you cannot understand. Your parents might even be alive and rich, and then you, you turn out not as rich as them. Or you can lose that very nice thing that you treasure so much because you have forgotten about God and you think that you are great. Some of you, you move with your phones when you're touched. I mean, just because you want somebody to see. The girls, I see them when they paint their nails, they move like this. And I am like, come on, it doesn't have to be this. And you know, you know, my dear, I, you, know, I mean, you just want to show off. That's pride. And then when they pledge new hairstyles, they're always touching their hair. You know, I know women's things more than men's things. They're always touching their hair. And you're like, eh, eh, how, what do you think about my hair? Is it okay? It's cool. You know? Eh? <laughs> and me, I'm like, Casta was a severe one. You mean it is okay? Eh? And once one person tells you it is not okay, every week you have to change, or every two weeks. Don't be proud. Some of you are very brilliant. You have brains. Yeah? And you walk like there is no ground even because of your brains. Hmm? People ask you questions and they're like, you mean you didn't understand? It was so easy. Hey, eh? eh? director was so clear about it. Why didn't you understand? We have discussed several times, and every time you keep saying you don't understand. When will you ever understand? <laughs> the same question, the same question comes. The same person, the same question. I don't know. I think you need to leave our group of discussion. Me, I don't know. Me, I'm tired. You, we leave that girl. Let her get out of our group. Me, I'm tired of her. Every time I don't understand. That's she cuts lectures. Ah, ah. Pride. Just accommodate her. She may not pass, or he may not pass, but at least bear with them. Don't be proud. It is God who gave you the wisdom. Actually, for me, one of the things God blessed me with was when I was in school, I would always make friends with her. Mo Let me use the word most stupid. Academically. Dull, I think is the English word. The dullest. 
would be my friend, dense, eh? Eh, those who are very dense, heavy. They have heavy brains, I don't know what dense means. Whether that brain has water or whatever, I don't know. So I would make friends with them. You know why? Two reasons. One, I thought I was doing a ministry to them, and they would appreciate. Number two, I would be practicing what I already what? No. By teaching somebody who does not know, I am also revising. Now, some of you don't know that. That when you teach somebody who does not know, you are learning also. You are reminding yourself. But also you are doing a great service to God and to man. Okay, let's go. But be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, that's what they are telling you. Sometimes it's not possible. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. That's a community. A community is of people who are disciplined. It's hard to leave all those things. When you go to Leviticus in the Old Testament, some of you don't like reading the Old Testament because you think Christ is not there. But let me tell you, why they wrote it is because Christ comes from the Old Testament. It comes from there. Even when you read the New Testament, you, they quote the Old Testament. So when you go to Leviticus, you, when you read it and you get time and you read it, you will see the basic laws of living with people. The basic I'm not saying you obey all those laws as they are, as if they are laws of Uganda. No, 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 no. It will just teach you the basic discipline of living in a community with people. I want to thank Reverend Alex. We live together in a community. I know he's home, but I've never been there, but we are friends. He comes to my home to pick me, but have you ever entered my house? Okay, he has entered my house. I've not entered, I've entered yours when you were living the other side. Yes, but he changed places. But we are in a community and we are friends. And the child lands at my place. I respect him. He's younger than me. I am older than him. He respects me. I respect him. Because it is not about age. It's not about brains. It's not about Riches, it's about living together in a community of believers so that others may look at us and admire us and call Jesus Christ into their hearts. But if we, are, we have fights and quarrels among us, how will the non-believers come to us? May God bless you.